Today, we'll discuss the art of effectively managing customer complaints and mastering the strategies of service recovery. Let's explore the crucial role these skills play in building and maintaining strong customer relationships in the dynamic world of services marketing. Remember that people is one of the seven P's in the extended services marketing mix, and so knowing how to manage customers is critical in managing customer satisfaction. Why is customer management crucial? Consider this, when faced with a service failure, only 4% of customers express their dissatisfaction through complaints. While this percentage may seem small on an individual basis, it translates to a significant number when dealing with a large customer base. Surprisingly, statistics indicate that out of every 100 customers experiencing a service failure, 96 choose not to complain, and a staggering 91 decide never to return. This underscores the importance of actively seeking feedback. Without a proactive approach, those who have encountered service issues, including those you may not be aware of, are likely to silently disengage from your services, emphasizing the critical need for effective customer management strategies. Now, speaking of service failures, there are actually four types. It's crucial to recognize the diverse types that can impact customer satisfaction, because how you recover from each type will differ. The first, service delivery system failures, can manifest in various ways. Picture a scenario where a customer encounters an unavailable service, perhaps a website being down for an extended period, or experiences unreasonably slow service, like a prolonged wait time at a restaurant. These core service failures can significantly impact customer satisfaction. Moving to the realm of customer needs and requests, consider a situation where a customer with specific dietary requirements encounters challenges in receiving suitable menu options at a restaurant. This represents a failure to meet special customer needs. Additionally, difficulties arising from customer preferences, like a hotel room not meeting specific requests, or addressing admitted customer errors, such as a billing mistake, are common examples. Lastly, disruptive errors, like a flight schedule change without sufficient notice, can further compound service challenges. Yet another type of service failure is unprompted or unsolicited staff actions. Consider a scenario where a staff member, with good intentions, offers unusual attention to a customer. While the intention may be positive, it could be perceived as intrusive, particularly if it deviates from cultural norms or occurs under adverse conditions. There are also service challenges stemming from problematic customers. This may involve instances of verbal or physical abuse directed towards staff, customers who deliberately break company policies, or those who prove uncooperative during service interactions. These examples underscore the complexity of service encounters and the need for service providers to navigate various customer behaviors. Understanding these failures not only allows us to categorize and analyze them but also equips us with the insights needed to implement effective complaint handling and service recovery strategies. Speaking of customers who complain, there are also four types of complaining customers. First on our list are the passives, customers who, when faced with dissatisfaction, opt for inaction. Picture a situation where a customer quietly endures a subpar experience, harboring skepticism about the impact of complaining. Transitioning to the voicers, we encounter a more proactive group. Consider a scenario where a customer, displeased with a product, contacts customer support to voice their concerns directly. However, voicers are less likely to take drastic measures like switching providers or engaging in negative word of mouth. Now, let's explore the irates. These customers go beyond direct complaints, they actively spread negative word of mouth. Imagine a dissatisfied customer sharing their unfavorable experience on social media platforms, potentially influencing others. Irates are more prone to considering switching providers, posing a higher risk to service providers. Lastly, we confront the activists, or terrorists, in this context. These customers not only amplify their dissatisfaction through negative word of mouth, but are also more inclined to switch providers. Envision a customer who not only complains to the service provider but takes their grievances to a third party, magnifying the impact of their dissatisfaction. Understanding these customer archetypes is instrumental for service providers as they navigate the intricacies of complaint handling and service recovery. Complaints themselves can also effectively be characterized along two dimensions, instrumental to non-instrumental and ostensive to reflexive. Firstly, let's explore the instrumental dimension. 
An instrumental complaint is one where the actual act of complaining contributes to problem resolution. Imagine a customer contacting a tech support helpline to report a malfunctioning device. The act of complaining directly facilitates a solution, making it an instrumental complaint. On the flip side, non instrumental complaints may involve venting or expressing dissatisfaction without a direct expectation of problem resolution, such as sharing grievances on social media. Now, shifting our focus to the ostensive and reflexive dimension, we distinguish between complaints directed at an outside realm and those that reflect inward. An ostensive complaint is outward focused. Directed at resolving an issue with an external party. Consider a customer complaining to a company about a faulty product. In contrast, a reflexive complaint is more introspective, where the act of complaining is a form of personal expression or catharsis, with no direct expectation of external resolution. By understanding these dimensions, service providers can tailor their complaint handling strategies to address the specific nature of each complaint type. Also, it's crucial to understand the very trajectories that dissatisfaction can take. Firstly, we voice, which refers to the expression of dissatisfaction. This is the proactive act of customers voicing their grievances, whether through direct communication with the service provider, online reviews, or other channels. Voice is a crucial avenue for constructive feedback and an opportunity for service providers to address and rectify service shortcomings. Moving on, we encounter Exit, a phenomenon where dissatisfied customers choose to discontinue patronizing the service. Exit is a significant concern for service providers, as it represents a loss of customer loyalty and potential revenue. Understanding the factors that drive customers to Exit is pivotal for implementing effective service recovery strategies. Lastly, Retaliation, which takes customer dissatisfaction to a more extreme level. In this scenario, customers deliberately take actions to damage the physical operation of the service or harm future business. This could manifest as negative word of mouth, online defamation, or even more destructive actions. Retaliation underscores the potential ripple effect of unaddressed customer dissatisfaction and the importance of proactive complaint handling. But, why do customers complain in the first place? Well, there are at least four reasons why. Firstly, complaining serves as an emotional release mechanism. In the context of services marketing, consider a customer who encounters issues with their internet service. By venting frustrations or expressing dissatisfaction through a complaint, the customer uses this as a means to alleviate the built-up pressure and dissatisfaction they may be experiencing. Secondly, complaining helps reassert personal control. This motivation is particularly evident when customers feel a loss of control over a situation. For instance, imagine a scenario where a traveler experiences delays and disruptions during a flight. Lodging a complaint with the airline allows the customer to regain a sense of control by actively taking steps to address the service failure. Next, in services marketing, customers may share their negative experiences on social media platforms. This not only serves as a means of seeking empathy from their network but also can prompt the service provider to respond and address the issue publicly, showcasing their commitment to customer satisfaction. Lastly, when customers voice complaints, especially those related to specific details or features of a service, it can signal a deep understanding of the service and its intricacies. For instance, a tech-savvy customer may provide detailed feedback on software glitches, showcasing their expertise and contributing valuable insights for service improvement. As we examine real-world examples of complaints directed at WestJet, we gain valuable insights into the diverse nature of customer grievances. On the left, we encounter a succinct tweet expressing frustration with the question, how can you screw things up so badly? This falls into the category of an expressive or reflexive complaint. The customer, likely feeling dissatisfied, is using Twitter as a venting platform, seeking a form of emotional release. The brevity of the message suggests a desire for a quick expression of frustration rather than a detailed account seeking resolution. Now, shifting our focus to the complaint on the right, too long for a Twitter explanation. What I paid for didn't get and was not notified. Will be calling. Who should I speak to? This type of complaint is more instrumental and ostensive in nature. The customer is conveying a specific issue, services paid for were not received, and there was a lack of notification. 
The mention of calling and the inquiry about who to speak to indicate a clear expectation of problem resolution. This customer likely feels the need for direct communication with the airline to address the issue. In both instances, these complaints serve various functions. The first tweet is a venting mechanism, a reflexive complaint providing emotional release. On the other hand, the second tweet is an expressive and instrumental complaint, seeking resolution for specific service failures. Building upon the insights from our previous slide on why customers complain, let's delve into the reasons behind the silence of dissatisfied customers. Firstly, the perception of low personal control over a situation can be a significant deterrent. When customers feel helpless or believe their complaints won't yield tangible results, they may choose to endure dissatisfaction silently rather than vocalize their concerns. The inseparability of services introduces another layer of complexity. In some instances, customers might internalize service failures, questioning if they've done something wrong. This self-blame can act as a barrier to complaining, as customers may feel hesitant to express dissatisfaction that they perceive as a personal shortcoming. Furthermore, in cases where services are technical or highly specialized, customers may hesitate to complain due to a perceived lack of knowledge or expertise. This feeling of inadequacy can lead customers to refrain from voicing their concerns, assuming they lack the necessary background to articulate their grievances effectively. Speaking of why customers do not complain, why do they not do so? Well, the first significant barrier is inconvenience. Customers often find it challenging to navigate the right complaint procedures, leading to a perceived effort barrier. The difficulty in discovering the correct channels and the effort required to make a complaint can discourage customers from taking action. Secondly, there may be doubtful payoff. Customers may be uncertain whether their complaints will yield any meaningful results. The skepticism regarding whether the firm will take action to rectify the problem can dissuade individuals from investing time and energy in lodging a complaint. Lastly, there's the barrier of unpleasantness. Customers may fear being treated rudely, anticipate hassle, or experience embarrassment during the complaint process. These concerns about the emotional toll of complaining can act as significant deterrents, leading customers to choose silence over expressing their dissatisfaction. Understanding these barriers is pivotal for service providers aiming to foster an environment where customers feel comfortable and motivated to voice their grievances. As service providers, understanding the barriers to customer complaining is crucial, and we have identified key strategies to reduce these barriers, fostering a more open and responsive environment. First on our list is to make feedback easy and convenient. Consider implementing user-friendly online platforms or accessible customer service hotlines that simplify the process of lodging complaints. By offering hassle-free channels, you empower customers to express their grievances effortlessly. Next, assuring that feedback is taken seriously is paramount. Clearly communicate to your customers that their feedback matters and will be earnestly addressed. For instance, a hotel could prominently display a commitment to addressing guest concerns on its website, reassuring visitors that their feedback is a valuable driver of improvement. Lastly, making the feedback experience positive involves designing a complaint handling process that is respectful and constructive. Ensure that customer service representatives are trained to handle complaints with empathy and professionalism. Consider implementing follow-up measures, such as a thank-you note for feedback, to turn the complaint experience into a positive interaction. These strategies not only reduce barriers to customer complaining but also contribute to building a culture of open communication and continuous improvement in the dynamic realm of services marketing. You might now be asking, why do we want customers to complain? Out of 100 customers who experience a service failure, we previously noted that 96 of them will not complain. But, remember that 91 of them will also not come back. So, if you don't know what the failure was in the first place, you can't recover from it and salvage customer satisfaction. This is called the service recovery paradox. The service recovery paradox is a phenomenon observed in services marketing where customers who have experienced a service failure and then have that failure effectively addressed and resolved by the service provider, may end up having a more positive view of the service provider than if the service failure had never occurred. In other words, successfully recovering from a service failure can result in a higher level of customer satisfaction and loyalty than if the service had been flawless from the beginning.
This paradox is rooted in the idea that how a service provider handles and resolves problems can significantly impact customer perceptions. When customers see genuine efforts to address and rectify issues, it can enhance their confidence in the service provider's commitment to customer satisfaction. Consequently, a well-handled service recovery can strengthen the customer-provider relationship, leading to increased loyalty and positive word of mouth. The service recovery paradox prompts us to consider some intriguing questions and ethical dilemmas. Firstly, it raises the notion of deliberately introducing minor service failures to later showcase exceptional recovery. The idea is to strategically screw up a little to demonstrate superb problem-solving capabilities. However, this approach demands careful ethical scrutiny, as intentionally causing service failures for strategic purposes may pose risks to trust and transparency. Secondly, it acknowledges the harsh reality that not all service failures are recoverable. Some failures, no matter the recovery efforts, might leave lasting negative impacts on customer perceptions. This highlights the importance of proactive measures to prevent catastrophic failures that might be irrecoverable. The third point sheds light on the financial aspect, emphasizing that service recovery can be an expensive endeavor for firms. Beyond the direct costs of rectifying the failure, there are potential indirect costs associated with reputational damage and customer churn. Lastly, the slide prompts us to question the ethical considerations of deliberately causing service failures. While the strategic screw-up for superb recovery might be tempting, it raises fundamental questions about honesty, integrity, and the long-term impact on customer trust. When it comes to recovering from service failures, it's also important to note that simply correcting the outcome might not be necessary to ensure and rebuild customer satisfaction. In other words, the service recovery effort is an art that extends beyond simply correcting mistakes. Two crucial dimensions of this artistry are procedural justice and interactional justice, which, in many instances, are just as important, if not more, than the actual correction of the service failure or distributive justice. Procedural justice focuses on the fairness of the steps and procedures involved in the service recovery process. Imagine a scenario where a customer encounters an issue with an online purchase. The procedural fairness would involve a transparent and straightforward process for reporting the problem, tracking its resolution, and receiving timely updates. Even if the service failure is eventually corrected, a lack of procedural fairness can leave a lasting negative impression on the customer. Equally crucial is interactional justice, which revolves around the kindness and politeness of employees involved in the service recovery. Consider a situation where a customer faces an issue with a hotel reservation. Regardless of how efficiently the problem is resolved, if the employees handling the situation are dismissive, unkind, or impolite, it can significantly impact the overall customer experience. The courteousness of the interaction plays a pivotal role in shaping perceptions of the service provider. In essence, the art of service recovery lies not only in rectifying mistakes but also in ensuring that the process is perceived as fair and the interactions are conducted with empathy and respect. Imagine a customer who encounters an issue with an online order. Procedural justice comes into play as the customer initiates the complaint process. A fair and transparent procedure involves an easily accessible platform to report the problem, a prompt acknowledgement of the issue, and clear communication throughout the resolution process. In this instance, the company demonstrates procedural fairness by providing a user-friendly interface, immediate confirmation of the issue, and regular updates on the status of the resolution. Simultaneously, interactional justice becomes crucial when the customer interacts with customer service representatives. The employees handling the issue showcase empathy, patience, and politeness, ensuring the customer feels valued and heard. A courteous and respectful interaction enhances the overall service experience, influencing the customer's perception of the company. In this scenario, the effective correction of the service failure, coupled with procedural fairness and positive interactions, results in a holistic service recovery. The customer not only sees their issue resolved, but also appreciates the fairness and empathy demonstrated throughout the process. This comprehensive approach to service recovery, addressing both procedural and interactional aspects, significantly contributes to customer satisfaction and loyalty. As we conclude our exploration of customer complaints and service recovery, it becomes evident that services, by their very nature, cannot achieve perfection every time, inevitably giving rise to failures. 
However, in acknowledging this inherent imperfection, we recognize the pivotal role of service recovery in the dynamic realm of services marketing. The paradoxical outcome of service recovery, where effectively addressing failures can result in even greater customer satisfaction and loyalty than flawless service, underscores its importance. Navigating the artistry of responding to complaints becomes essential in situations where perfection is unattainable. This involves a strategic and empathetic approach to rectify service failures, emphasizing the significance of how service providers handle and resolve customer complaints. Within this artistry, the dimensions of justice, both procedural and interactional, play a crucial role. Procedural justice ensures fairness in the complaint handling process, offering transparent procedures and effective communication. Simultaneously, interactional justice focuses on the kindness and respect displayed during customer interactions, fostering a positive customer-provider relationship. Our journey through customer complaints and service recovery has uncovered the complexities and nuances inherent in the services industry. Embracing imperfections, leveraging the power of service recovery, and infusing justice into the complaint handling process are essential components of successfully navigating the dynamic landscape of services marketing.